Hedera Hashgraph and its native token, HBAR, are flipping cryptocurrencies completely on their heads and doing things a bit differently. So let's talk about this emerging technology, the huge benefits of it, and the potential risks of this. That way, by the end of this video, you'll be a bona fide, HBAR aficionado and be able to determine if this is an investment worth jumping into. And as always, in order to better illustrate what exactly is going on here, I have painstakingly built a flowchart. All right, you know things are serious when I bust out the iPad glove. I'm looking like a half, half Michael Jackson kind of glove here. You know things are serious when the glove gets busted out. So, so we have the flow chart here. As always, if you want to be able to download this flow chart, have it on your own computer, have my research notes, make sure you join the Patreon. Also, on the Patreon, link down in the description, super affordable, worth your investment because you'll probably make more money back just in the membership. I am posting private videos there as well. I posted two in the last like eight days or something like that. Yesterday, I posted one that was half hour long. So you'll want to check that out. The Patreon, join the Patreon if you're interested in even more in-depth information. Without further ado, let's hop into this presentation on Hedera Hashgraph. Kind of a mouthful of a title, but it's a very interesting project. project. So, uh, so let's jump in here. Founded by Dr. Lehman Bard and Mance Harmon. Zoom in on these fine fellow here. All right, and starting with what this is not, it actually is not a blockchain consensus mechanism. Like I said in the intro of this video, they kind of are flipping cryptos on their head and, and building consensus and having a public ledger and doing it in a completely different way that no one else is doing. The, the Hashgraph technology is completely patented and licensed by HBAR. So it's not a blockchain. We're gonna explain what it is. This is introducing the new technology, Hashgraph technology. All right, now what is Hashgraph technology? And this is gonna get a little bit wordy, so if you don't wanna get down in the nitty gritty technicals, then you could skip ahead a couple of minutes. I don't recommend it, because I think if you're thinking about investing in something, you really should understand it, but just a nerdy disclosure here. So in Hedera's words, first off, and we're just gonna explain an overview and then kind of how it works more in depth. In Hedera's words, Hedera is the only public ledger that uses Hashgraph consensus, a faster, more secure alternative to blockchain consensus mechanisms. It uses a gossip about gossip protocol. Don't worry, all this is going to make sense in a minute here. And it still stores a copy of its ledger on every node in the network, like the blockchain, so it's still a trustless system. So on a blockchain network, you have nodes, and each one of those nodes has effectively a public list of all the transactions that has ever happened on that crypto network. And that's why it's decentralized. That's why that's why this is so revolutionary, because one node, one computer can go away and and the rest of the nodes still have all the information. It's secure. You don't have to bank on someone like Visa or some government to hold all this information. It's, you don't need to trust everyone else in the system. It's just there. It's validated. It's there. Now, they're doing it a little bit different. And this is how it works. So this is going to look a little bit complicated at first, but we're going to break this down slowly. So this is a hash graph. And you want to look at this starting with the bottom and think of it as a timeline. And as time passes, it, it increases. So the bottom here would be time zero. And then we go up, time passes, time passes, time passes a timeline. And this graph just gets infinitely long over time. So you want to think of this graph as the very beginning of hash graph, of the hash graph, of Hedera. The bottom, you know, no transactions happen. And then the very first transaction here is Alice. You can see Alice which is the very first transaction, what, what, how it works here is she sends a message or a transaction or a note or some, some form of information on the network, and she sends that randomly to one other node on the network. In this example, there's only eight nodes, just to keep things simple. In reality, there's far more nodes. So she sends one random message to another node. In this case, it goes to Dave. And then Dave sends that message randomly to another node. In that, in that case, it goes up to Bob. And then Bob sends it randomly to Ellen and so on. And what happens here is you have this kind of virus effect where 
exponentially all the nodes and operators are getting the information because it's just sent random. So it's like this, this chaos where there's random action, but it actually makes the system more efficient, which is really interesting. So we can see as time passes, we just have that one transaction from Alice as we're going up, and then we have some new messages or new transactions from Bob and Carol. So Bob and Carol, they have their message or transaction. They send that transaction randomly. You can see Carol's transaction gets sent randomly to Gina and Bob's gets sent randomly to Frank. And then those people send it randomly to in other individuals. And again, all the individuals in the network eventually get all the information on the new transactions. So kind of covering this a little bit more in depth. First, it starts with one message sent to a random person a node. Um, and remember, the goal is for information to be distributed. You want everyone on the network to have that information, and ideally as quickly as possible, and with as few resources as possible. Two, the receiver then forwards the message until everyone knows about it. This is the exponential exponential spreading, and this is the, the kind of virus effect that I set. You know, you send that to one person, that person sends it to another person, you know, it just builds up uh, exponentially. Three, we can tell when a message was received, this is really unique, by taking the median time of receipt of the message. So let's think about this. If you have, going up to the hash graph again, if you have these eight node operators, they're all receiving that information at different times. So if you take the times that each of those eight node operators receive the transaction, and then you take the median time of those eight timestamps, that actually gives us some really important information because it tells us the time at which 50% of the node operators were aware of the transaction. So built in, baked into the system is the time of the transaction, which just means less communication back and forth, and it's a more efficient way to do it. So that's just one small advantage here. And number four, all transactions together create the hash graph, which is what we have here. This is the entire graph. So you can think of it as kind of like a snapshot of all the transactions. And we have this timeline just increasing over time, you know, all the lines on, on the nodes. And then each circle here, like this Alice circle, contains special information. And that information is the signature, the timestamp, the transaction informa information, and two hashes. So all the information that we get on the blockchain is also stored here. Like I said, it's it's like a snapshot of all the transactions, the, the hash graph that is. And it also has this benefit of giving virtual voting without communication needed because we have this hash graph with all the information. So it's a very unique way to do things. And it'll be really interesting to see exactly how this pans out. You know, obviously just, it, it's cool that people are looking at it in different ways. That's why you just gotta love that there's geniuses out there who are just thinking of new, new ways to do things. It takes a special brain to look at something, look at a problem that has a good solution, be like, no, wait, this, this also could work. So moving on here, let's talk about use cases. First off, payments. And you'll notice with a lot of these use cases, they're the same use cases as other blockchain technology, but we'll go over them either way. Real-time settlement. So this is really unique. HBARs or any issue tokens on the network take seconds to settle. So very fast tr transaction settlement times, which is on par with Visa. That should say par, not pay that's going to kill me. Uh, <laughs> there's low fees, predictably low fees at a fraction of a penny. So extremely cheap. And, and there's not going to be these huge surges and something like gas fees, things like that. And there's regulatory compliance baked in, which meets the requirements for the KYC, know your customer. And, uh, Here's something that I definitely want to point out, and I'm going to discuss it again a little bit later. So many argue that we shouldn't compare Hedera's network to other cryptos, though, because their network is inherently different. So many people say we shouldn't really look at settlement time and transactions per second of Hedera because they do things completely differently. They're not quite as decentralized as like a true blockchain network. I'm going to explain this later, but many people say like, yeah, you know, settlement times are faster, but we really shouldn't compare because it it's it's not totally decentralized. So we're, we'll discuss that later. Also fraud mitigation. Um, fraud of digital assets accounts for billions of dollars every single year. I mean, anytime anything is illegally downloaded, you know, that's fraud of a digital asset. Projects like Hedera or really any other cryptocurrency are aiming to solve these issues with, you know, the public ledger, tokenized assets, NFTs, things like that. Personal information, this is a big one. It's already being used. It's it's also being used right now by government governments in 
the Cardano network who are doing student IDs, but personal information and credentials can be stored on Hedera, giving user security with their information and control over who gets to see it. So you have all this information. There's a lot of use cases here. Let's say you have all your, your online browsing data and um, you want to opt into some website, but that website wants to take a look at your data for you know whatever reason they want to look at it. Through this system, you could have options like not sending them that data, being paid for your own data. You know, there's, there's tons of use cases here. It's also perfect for healthcare and education. On the healthcare end, you could have your health data and then you could do something like be paid for your data to be used in studies. Or of course, only offer that data to particular people who are looking into your, your individual health, things like that. There's a lot of use cases. And like I said earlier, same applications as blockchains. The only difference here is Hedera is trying to do this more efficiently and different than blockchains. And that's really the reason why a lot of people have become big fans of Hedera because it's, they're just doing it different. You look at it and like, okay, this could be the next big thing. And I've, been, I've received, I don't even know how many messages to do this breakdown. So this is for all the people who have messaged me saying, you gotta do an HBAR breakdown. Okay, governance. We have to cover this real quick. I know it's boring, but it's really important in this case. So their governance cons consists of 39 global organizations, including some, some big hitters, Google, IBM, T-Mobile, Boeing, and Swirls, which is their, that's the creator of the Hedera uh, ecosystem. Each of those organizations has an equal 2.6% influence on decision making. It's not weighed uh, in any way whatsoever. Each of them has equal decision making power. There's a three year maximum term for each seat on the organization seats and you can only have two consecutive terms. And then we have these subcommittees that do other, you know, various decision making, marketing, tokenization, things like that. And the members are not compensated beyond their regular node payments, you know, just for transactions within the node and validating transactions. So they're not being paid just to be a part of this. There's, there's no perverse incentives is what they're trying to show here. But there are risks and concerns. The biggest one, is it actually decentralized? And to be honest, it's really hard to argue that it is decentralized in this current state, you know, with the 39 selected members. So we have these node operators who are pre-selected and inherently that's not decentralization as is. Now they do have plans to make this more and more and more decentralized over time, but at its current state, it's hard to say that it truly is. Some people say it is because 30, they say that 39 is enough and you know there's some randomization in there. It still would be hard for there to be a bad actor, but it's hard to say that it's truly decentralized because not just anyone could go in, start a node and you know, start processing, validating transactions. It's also a completely new territory and new tech. They're the only people doing the Hashgraph technology. And of course, there's an uphill battle here. And then as always, volatility. Every single crypto is extremely volatile. And none of this should be construed as financial advice or me telling you to buy anything or to sell anything. I'm just trying to give you the facts and then you can make your own decision. That is my goal. So that's going to do it for this presentation. If you enjoyed this, all I ask for is a simple like and subscribe on this channel, especially if you want more good hard hidden facts like this. Join the Patreon if you want even more access, tons going on there. There's also various offers linked down in the description, things like free crypto, the crypto exchange that I use, KuCoin, which is way cheaper than Coinbase. Also, you can lend out coins, tons of other options there. So yeah, that's gonna do it. I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.